Coach Mike McConaughey, the Demon basketball coach, whose team is on a four-game winning streak. you got to like the sound of that. Uh, it's a lot better place to be than we were about two weeks ago. Uh, kids have responded, uh, done real well with the adjustments that we've made in our team. Uh, defensive philosophy, I guess you might say, and uh, playing hard and being very aggressive and continuing to create turnovers with 13 steals against uh, Abilene Christian on Saturday and actually ended up, I think, uh, with about 30 points off a of turnover. So that's, that's a pretty special uh, situation. The confidence level of your team uh, is high as it's been all year long, I would suspect. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that we feel comfortable with where we are and who we are. And, uh, of course, we've got to make sure that we maintain focus on, on each upcoming opponent. And that being said, with McNeese coming in here on Wednesday, they're very talented. They've got some really nice pieces. I think they've got as good a, good a talent as they've had. You look at their record, and they're 5-4 and four in the league as well as we are. Um, 7 14 overall, played extremely difficult schedule, uh, did not have the opportunity to play um, um, their regular home schedule because of uh, conflicts in their arena, which has created a problem for them. But Dave Simmons does a great job shooting the free throw ball really, really well and rebounded the last opponent they out. They doubled them 48 to 24 on the board, so they're doing an excellent job. McNeese and Northwestern, a great rivalry in the first place. Then you have Dave Simmons, who I know is a dear friend of yours, former assistant coach, a uh, guy who knows this program's uh, roots and uh, very familiar with you. Um, aside from the emotional challenge of coaching against a friend, the practical challenge of coaching against somebody who knows you and this program so well certainly creates obstacles on Thursday night. Well, that's a real challenge because I always say it's like you're playing yourself. And uh, that's, that's, you know, so, sometimes the toughest, thing, the toughest scrimmages or games are against people that know you really, really well. Tendencies know what you, you tend to do whenever uh, certain things come up. So that is a real challenge. But uh, Coach Simmons is a really good man and very, very good coach. Uh, uh, really under, uh, doesn't get the appreciation that I think that he deserves because he's always competitive. Uh, you know, winning league title a couple of years back. Uh, just does a great, really good job. Okay, um, let's talk back about your team. Uh, Bryson White had a special week last week. 24 and 28, um, and the game against Abilene Christian has five dunks. I don't know how many dunks that he had. I wish that they, the uh, people that uh, the dunk committee could have seen the dunks because they'd have been impressed with them because the velocity and the speed. I guess that's the velocity and the height that he's gaining off of his dunks is is quite remarkable, and it's like a it, it, he really is like a human highlight film. Uh, Jalen West had two ten assist games and continues to uh, guide your team very well from the point guard slot. Yeah, Jalen really playing very steady and very solid, doing what he needs to do, and uh, really operating and getting the ball where it needs to go, distributing extremely well, and um, you know scoring when he needs to. Um, we didn't get him to the free throw line. Uh, a little disappointed in that, especially in the first half of the Abilene Christian game. I really felt like that he should have been at the free throw line. I had a bucket taken away from him off of a charge, which um, you know I, I'm not supposed to question anything, but uh, it was it was pretty frustrating. Now you've gotten ensemble performances from the rest of the team, uh, folks like Marvin Frazier, Gary Stewart, and others uh, stepping up and making plays. Uh, it's beginning to look a lot like what we've known Demon basketball to look like when it's been at its best through the years. It, it really is, but it, with one difference, we're not up pressing people. Now we've pressed, picked up and pressed a few possessions, um, and um, we've playing a 3-2 zone, as we call it, blue, and um, it's been very effective because we've taken passing lanes away. And one thing that is really interesting, the two leading steal – what am I sorry, wait a minute. The two leaders in the steel category in the nation are two guards that both went to Sabri Thompson's high school, and they both play for teams that run zones. And so the theory that you can't get steals out of the zone is, is, is a fallacy. I think that Jim boeheim has been doing a pretty good job for a good many years running his 2-3, and so uh, that's been a real positive, cause, but, but we're playing it aggressive in passing lanes, trying to pay people, make people throw the ball over us, around us, or under us, uh, to where it's slowing the reversal of the ball. 
McNeese uh, pounded Oral Roberts on the board Saturday. Your team has rebounded a lot better uh, here in the last three, four games. Talk about the importance of the rebounding battle Thursday night in Brother Coliseum. Uh, it will be very, very big because they're uh, McNeese is a very streaky team offensively. When they're making their shots, they're just very, very effective. When they're not, and they they're going to get an offensive rebounds, it really creates a real problem for you, their opponent, because they're getting extra second chance points, and that's that's not a good thing. All right, let's turn our attention then Saturday to Nichols. It'll come in. Uh, as the week starts, Nichols is in second place in the conference. Has certainly been a team that has surprised many around the league, but I know you're very familiar with Nichols personnel, and they've had some great battles with us for the years. Uh, the Coach Piper does a wonderful job. He has a very good system. It fits his personnel, and uh, got Dan Trill Thomas from over Man. He's a senior. He's doing really good. I think he's like in the top four or five scores in the conference and very athletic. Um, just a really, really good player. They got other other nice pieces, and uh, they're going to run their stuff five out motion, and they're going to be very effective with it. And they're going to take what you give them. If you give them a layup, they'll take it. If you give them a three pointer, they'll take it. They don't mind working that shot clock down. They really do a good job defensively, and really make things difficult for you, especially in our power offense. They do a really nice job of um, trapping ball screens and trying to create problems for us. You've. Uh amped up the scoring back to uh, the level that Demon fans have gotten accustomed to. Uh, what's made the offense work the last I season? think we've gotten easy buckets off of our defense again out of the zone, and we've, we've realized that. And the other thing I think that it's allowed us to understand you're already in your lanes, just run your lanes as hard as you possibly can. So it's an adjustment. Continually, we're not there yet, but we're continuing to get better defensively and get better offensively with that and pick up easy buckets. We had 35 transition points against Abilene Christian, holding them to three. We held uh, Incarnate Ward to 12 transition points, and I think we had about 20, 20 in the 20s against um, Incarnate Ward. Okay, Thursday night is gumbo cook-off night. We had uh, chili last week. It's gumbo. What uh, is your perspective on what makes good gumbo? Uh, warm, nice uh, uh, flavors, um, just it's good when it's cold outside too. Uh, be, that that would be my things. It'll be cold Thursday night, and um, I didn't know if they made a lot of gumbo in Bossier Parish growing up. Or no, not a tremendous amount, but I mean they've they've started everything kind of migrated north, and we've got crawfish even up there now. All right, we're here with. Women's basketball co-head coach Brooke Storr and coach, you got two big wins last week over Incarnate Word and Abilene Christian. Really, the the high points of that were balanced scoring. So just talk about how your team was so successful together. Well, I think that's um, just kind of as we evolve as a team. I think uh, you're you're seeing some continued development in some of the younger players. Um, but I think everybody's kind of trying to figure out their role and and have, have been pretty successful with that over the last couple of weeks of. Um, just giving us what the, what they can give us, and I think that that just really helps. When teams start to focus in on Trudy and Janelle and, and um, Keisha, we really have to have some balanced scoring. I think we've been able to do that, the ability for Chelsea and Presley to knock down open shots and Meredith um, to knock down open shots. It, it's really big for our team because they, we become that much more hard uh, to be guarded when, when everyone um, is contributing like that. So I think anytime you can get, um, I think we had what, five and double figures on Thursday and then um, just missed having five and double figures, almost six So um, on Saturday. So I think if we can continue to get that sort of production, um, we'll, we'll be tough to, tough to deal with at home. Uh, you are eight and one at home this year and 17 and five since you and Scott arrived. What at home makes you so good? Well, I think it's just a comfort level for our players, but um, I think the biggest thing is Prather Coliseum is a tough place to play, and I think when you get fans in the stands and um, your kids feed off their energy and the, the crowd's emotion, I think that that's really a big deal. Um, but I think it's something that, you know, our kids just feel comfortable at home, and uh, we, we really preach to them, you have to protect your home court and win your home games and, and league play, and then be able to go on the road and, and steal as many as you can. So I think that they've really kind of taken that to heart um, and we've been able to stay in games and, and give ourselves a chance to win uh, down the stretch. Uh, this is a crucial week. You have McNeese at home, 5.30 on Thursday. That game will be on ESPN3. And then you have Nichols 
on Saturday at 1. So just talk about those two teams and um, how important they are in the standings. Well, I think, um, you know, again, for us, it's they're extremely important because those are the two two opponents this week. And, and for our players, you know, they're aware of the standings and we, you know, we talk to them about that each week. But so much of ours is continuing to get better in order to put ourselves in a great position in those standings. And I think if we focus on that and focus on the little things, um, then that will enable us to, to have a good good position in those standings um, over the next few weeks. Um, it's it, This is a time of the season where it's separation time and teams start um, to either um, put themselves in a really good position or dig themselves a hole. And I think that, you know, one thing we've talked to our team a lot about is make sure to let's put ourselves in, in a great position in order to be successful in March. And um, hopefully we can do that this week. And it's two big games at home um, the last week of our home stand and before we hit the road for five games. And I think it's important that we continue to gain some confidence as a team um, on both ends of the floor. We uh, hope we have great crowds out. Um, Thursday night's also our uh, WBCA Pink Zone game where we'll be um, raising money for breast cancer awareness and, and supporting the WBCA's initiative in that respect. And um, it's a big deal um, in a lot of people's lives. And uh, we, we want to pay tribute to those people, that, those survivors, and also the people that have, have lost their lives due to breast cancer. Um, break down the two teams this week and what you expect to see from them. Well, McNeese is going to be a completely different look from last year. I mean, they, they're they running some of the same stuff and, and have some similar players, but they're very young. Um, you know, they they lose the, the Baggett twins, and for so many years, you know, that's all anyone has ever seen, and they've, they've been very, very good for them and obviously had tremendous success and took their program to new heights. And um, these younger kids are, are going to build on that. but. Um, there's still one left, and, and she's right up in the top of the league in scoring. And we've got to do a very good job. They're going to look to spread us out and um, look to penetrate, kick for threes. They'll run a lot of half-court sets looking to get three-point shots for um, both Allison and, um, and Johnson um, on the perimeter. Their inside game is very active. Um, Okoye was newcomer of the year last year in the league, and she, she does a great job of hitting the boards and, and can be very active in and around the paint um, and defensively. So we've got to do a good job of knowing where she is and trying to force her to make shots that um, are contested. And uh, as far as um, Nichols goes, they're going to play their matchup zone. Um, they've confused a lot of people with that, and it's uh, the first time you see it, it's, it's a little different. Um, I'm thankful we have them at home and not in Thibodeau. Um, I think that you know we've we've got to do some things, uh, especially guard Imani White and Jenny Nash and and uh, KK Babin on the perimeter. Very solid perimeter players for them that can shoot the basketball. It, uh, they're going to be a difficult guard um, because we're going to have to defend the shot. We're going to have to defend the drive, and we've got to defend their interior um, as well. So we've we've got our our work cut out for us this week. Um, but we've got to do a great job on the defensive end and rebounding the basketball. Offensively, we've got to attack and, and take what the defense gives us. All right, thanks. Good luck, Coach. Thanks.